Hello, my name is Sean Ennis from Ennis Management, and thank you for joining me here on the Creative Collective. And today I'm honored to be joined by a very special guest. He's a producer, engineer, songwriter, and recording artist from Brockton, Massachusetts, Terry Borderline. Peace, peace. So I really like your, uh, your stage name. Can you kind of talk me through how you came about choosing that name? So, um, I've gone through a series of stage names over time, and over the process, it was very much uh, finding a name to fully describe myself and who I am, right? When I was a kid, um, my friends used to call me a frat with a PH, you know? I don't even know where I really got that name from, but I don't know, I guess it kind of resonated with me. I, I'm a Gemini, so I was in a really... Uh, kind of like a, a, a foolish state. I joked around a lot, played a lot of pranks and a lot of things like that, you know, kind of like a frat boy. So it kind of fit at the time. Um, as time went on, I, I changed my name to a facade with a PH, you know, because the PH letters really resonated with me. And that's also my uh, producer alias, PH. Um, but, you know, the facade a moniker was, was meant at first for me to break down the facades in the world and the illusions that are put against us. But over time, I started to realize, at, at least in my first run of the industry, I started to become very much a facade myself, you know, doing things for other people I didn't really have to do in order to kind of get by. And it wasn't until I really started becoming more of myself and gaining more knowledge of self that I switched to the name Borderline, Terry Borderline, because uh, it's very, it's close to my last name, my government last name, so it's like, what people call me all the time, you know, my name's Terry, and um, being a Gemini, I've always been the type of person to bring you to the to the edge, you know, um, wherever you limit yourself in your ideas, or your boundaries, or your um, comfort, you know, um, I can bring you to the edge of that, to the borderlines, and, and beyond that, you know, so then you can see what's beyond the limits uh, of how you limit yourself and how we limit ourselves. Um, and I see myself uh, personally as, a, as I go on this growth of, of naming myself and uh, having these different identities. I see myself on the borderline of the most enlightened and supreme name that I'll eventually come across. Who knows what it is right now, but I do see myself on the borderline of it. I can feel it, I can taste it, and so right now borderline seems to fit me very much in that sense as well. In the future, I might have a new name. <laughs> but then, uh, until then, I'm borderline, you know? What music or artists have influenced you? Oh, I'm glad you asked this. Um, give me one moment. Somebody actually asked me this question recently, and I came up with a real good list. Uh, I have a, a very wide array of influences and, and music that I listen to that um, that really help shape me as an artist. Um, so I listen to, you know, Brazilian music. So Jorge Ben Benjor is one of my favorite artists. He does a lot of bossa nova um, and uh, Afro um, Brazilian sounds. Antonio Carlos Jobim He's one of my uh, influences. Black Star, Talib Kweli, and Yasin Bey. Um, Little Brother, Fonte, Big Pooh, Ninth, Ninth Wonder. That's one of my favorite rap groups. And I think they deserve a lot more credit than they've ever gotten. You know, I see them as up there with Tribe Called Quest, you know, and things like that. Um, Al Jarreau, uh, may he rest in peace. One of my favorite uh, singers, R&B singers. Uh, Patrice Ruchin. Another influence of mine, Lupe Fiasco, Kanye West, Esperanza Spalding, John Coltrane, Milton Nascimento, A Tribe Called Quest, I mentioned them earlier, Boogie, Smino, Binary Star, that's the one uh, One Below is a part of, J Electronica, Nas, Johnny Ventura, John Lucian, and uh, MF Doom. That's like my top 20 right now of who I'm listening to and who kind of influenced me even as growing up, <laughs> as I grew up. And being that you have been influenced by such a wide 
array of different musicians, different genres, and, and, and different sounds. What sort of effect do you think that that's had on, on your music? Oh, I think it's had a, uh, an amazing effect, honestly, because uh, people, people ask me that question all the time, like, oh, you know, you're so talented and your sound is so different. Who do you listen to? And um, that was kind of one of my first clues that, you know, my, my listening taste is different from the rest. So I, I see the advantages in being, you know, I have an expanded uh, sense of melody, you know. Um, I'm more receptive to different qualities of sound, right? I, you know, tell me if I go too, too long talking, but I, I have a, um, I have a, a, a gem that I, I've learned about sound, right? Where a lot of the mainstream music used nowadays in um, top 40 billboard charts is very low vibrational 808 type music. Not that there's a problem with 808s, you know, there's definitely um, a, a room and a scope for that. But it it leaves the listener who only exclusively listens to 808s and uh, so-called trap music, um, it leaves them uh, suscept more susceptible to the low vibrational music, but less receptible to the higher vibration music. So that's your um, R&B soul songs and your classical music and things of that nature. And so me, I've spent probably the last 10 years of my life on like a top 40 billboard chart fast. Like I'll listen to a little bit of radio music, but only in small spurts. Usually maybe if I'm working out or something like that. Everything else I try to make sure I keep cultured and curated, high vibration. So when I put it into my music, I can combine it with the low vibrational um, things and people can receive it you know, a lot easier. People can, can dance to it, they can vibe to it, and then they can open their minds and their, their souls to more higher vibrational and higher quality music um, beyond just the limited scope of the 808, uh, if that makes sense. Wow, I mean, that is so fascinating. I know myself, I've, I've done research in terms of, you know, what what has been some of the common trends in, in the most popular songs th throughout history? And some of the things that, that I found were songs that were, you know, happy songs or love songs or breakup songs. Songs that have a real common theme throughout history have generally been things that songwriters have been able to craft to some of the really big hits. But it's it's really fascinating for me to hear your your um you know what what you found and what you've discovered going even you know kind of more more so to the actual music than than the song lyrics and concepts and exploring the you know what what's going on with the frequencies and what sort of effect that that has on the listeners that's that's truly fascinating what what made you how how did you discover that well um i have a lot of you know just elders in my community who you know they they thankfully they they teach a lot of the younger generation what they can they throw events and whatnot i, I know me prefer, um, personally i learned a lot from one of my musical mentors uh Kavaya wright He's a he's a drummer. He's a bass player. He's a um, acoustic guitar player. He worked with the Marleys, Kamani Marley, and all that stuff. He's a he's a very very solid dude, you know, um, and really really inspires me in many ways. And he also deals with a lot of the science and sound therapy um, and how to heal with music. Um, and he intertwines it with his music. So I know growing up. I've always, I've always looked at it through the scope of just lyrics as a rapper, but he taught me the other aspects beyond that, the, the sound um, and the frequency and how to tie that to the music in order to help people heal and grow. Can you briefly describe your music making process? Yes. Um, so, usually, usually I'll list, uh, I, I'll listen to an instrumental 
or a sample, depending on if I'm creating the beat or if I'm just starting from an instrumental. If I'm creating the beat, I'm listening to the sample. I'm going through records, vinyl records, I'm listening to song after song until a, a part that catches my ear or catches my, my heart catches me. Um, once it catches me, I'm making different you know cuts and chops of it, putting drum breaks behind it, getting a rhythm flowing. Um, and all I need is really that head bop, that, that you know what I'm saying, four, four to eight bar, maybe 12 bar, even 16 bar loop. But that, that loop that like, you know, keeps my head moving. Once I get that, it's a wrap. I, I, I just, you know, really get into my, my head, my heart, um, and think about what what the music is, is, is telling me and what it's bringing me, right? Um, and... Right, I, I can get extra deep on this too, right? There's this there's this idea of of um, a a realm of music that exists, you know, just beyond what we see on the physical realm. And, you know, this realm of music is called the musical spheres, right? And it's where a lot of the classical artists, the artists uh, who created classical music and composed it, it's where a lot of them drew the inspiration for their sounds and their music, because it's all very high vibration, very classical sounding type type music to type, tap into. It's almost like um, Tom and Jerry. Like, I don't know if you ever watched Tom and Jerry, but like, you know, um, a cup will fall off a table and you'll hear the music that goes with that. It'll be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and like it falls, you know? Um, really tapping into the music of, of nature and reality is like that, you know? There's music behind everything, but you have to really kind of tap into it. And so when I'm listening to an instrumental or I'm listening to a song, I really try to get into that zone and really connect to that space where it's like there's, there's music and a meaning and a message and events and moments and actions coming out of this instrumental um and i i put it into words put it put it put it as into words as i can and you know if it's a sad song it'll be it'll be lyrics about sadness if it's a song about revenge it'll be vengeful lyrics if it's lyrics about love then it's going to be loving lyrics you know um and then really just working with the sounds in the instrumental to use my voice as its own instrument to match it you know, and by the time I have it memorized, woo, it's a wrap. That's the song, you know. Um, I record it. I have my own home recording studio. I record it here, um, make a few stems and premixes, send it out to my engineers who I trust. Um, they, they'll they'll uh, sh shape it up for me after my engineering process. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, it's ready to go, and we, we uh, distribute it and release now, I want to touch on something that, that you mentioned. You mentioned that you have a home recording studio. Yes. Why was it important for you to make the investment into your home recording studio? Super important. Um, so, I used to be a part of a hip-hop group, right? Uh, Fountain of Youth, and, you know... No shade to that group, you know, it was a, it was a good group, but I, I, learned, I had a lot of learning experiences through the creation, um, prime, and demise of that group. And part of the process was learning that, you know, you can't really just share equipment with anybody or expect people to give you their resources in order to allow you to succeed. Um, people... And, you know, ideally we do wish, like, oh, yeah, you have a studio, then that's my studio, too. You have a camera, that's my camera, too. You know, ideally we do wish that could work, but um, in reality it just doesn't. It doesn't really work like that. It's good to have your own um, in-house process that um, you can control because... You know, when you create a song, you don't have to question, oh, am I going to get a camera for this video? You have the camera for the video. When you um, have down, you don't have to question, oh, am I going to have money for studio time? You can record in your own studio. Um, these things will save you money um, infinitely as time goes on, like just over and over again, because they're, these are moments that are throughout the creation process as an artist so if you don't start owning parts of the creation process uh it's gonna start owning you <laughs> that's real rap raw um nipsey hustle also have has a saying that i like to 
use too, which is, you know, we have to own our business vertically, which is from the bottom up, you know? So that's, that's, that's the songwriting, that's the production, that's the recording, that's the um, engineering, that's the distribution, all the way down to streaming if you can, you know, a la Jay-Z and what he's done with Tidal, you know. If you can reach those types of goals and those types of heights, then you're in the most ideal position as an artist. And so right now I own most of my create, creation, creative process through my home studio. I have my own um, software for production. I have FL Studio, Ableton, and Pro Tools. I have um, my own microphone. I use a, a Shure um, microphone. I have my own um, mixing. I have my own turntable. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I build my own setup, you know, and, you know, multiple screens and computer stuff. And I've always been a computer whiz, you know. I grew up a nerd in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know. <laughs> now, what genre of music do you consider your work to be, and how would you describe your music? Hip hop. I'm gonna I'm consider my stuff hip hop, and you know, um, I would describe my music as uh, as a new sound. Um, as I said, with some with some nostalgic strings to it. Um, that will expand your mind, teach you something new, and have you doing something different. Um, also, I, I'd like to describe it as a, a eternal music, you know? It's music that's meant to, to have an eternal record to it, you know? I make my music with the intention of somebody uh, digging it up in an archeological site a thousand years from now, <laughs> saying, what's this, like, you know? Um, and so, yeah, my music is, is made for, for right now, it's made for the past, and it's made for the future, it's made for eternity, you know? Alright, now I'd like to talk about your upcoming album. Can you share the name of the album and sort of the creation process? So, my new upcoming album is called Ways of the World. It's been five years in the making. Um, it started off with me, you know, just working with a new sound. Um, as I started to discover the new sound, I started to discover who I was and um, gaining more knowledge of self. And as I gained knowledge of self, my sound grew and it changed even more. Um, and it started to create this project that um, not only tells the story of me, my, my life, my upbringing, um, but also ties it and connects it with the history of the world and the world's inhabitants um, through music, through sound, through song, through dance, through um, many positive features that are going to be on there. You know, I'm, I'm going to have uh, Forte on there. He's a really special Somerville artist. Um, his trajectory is through the roof. You know, if you haven't seen him, you know, you can look into the Scout Somerville or, you know, go to your your nearest um, uh, Atwood Tavern show or um, Hipstery show or go to um, uh, So Far Sounds. You know, there's a lot of different uh, collectives he works with on a regular basis. You know, um, if you're in the Boston area, you definitely see Forte. He's my brother. So, yeah, I got him uh, on a few spots on the album. I have my brother um, Reggie Q on the album. He's a he's a real special talent too. Um, sings, raps, uh, has the same type of uh, message and unique sound and bravado that can match the energy of this um, album. I have my wonderful girlfriend, who you know I, I've been with for nine years. She's a marvelous singer. She has her own following and her own fan base. I had her, you know, do some work on there. So, you know, her voice is, is all over this. And I definitely appreciate her presence on here. Um, yeah, and I, I, there's a few other, you know, guest spots just from, you know, the elders that have taught me, mentors that have taught me. I, I have them doing certain poetry on there. I'm working with Fair Hazel. Um, he's a UK artist. Uh, who is very talented as well. Um, 
makes his own production, um, plays the piano, guitar, uh, all that, and has a voice of a legend, man. He he can he can really sing. Like, uh, yeah, kind kind of kind of reminds me of. Hold on, I'm trying to do its name. Um, hold on, kind of reminds me of. Uh, hold on. Ch -ch -ch -ch. But yeah, um, lots of good features. Bobby Codwell, that's who he reminds me of. He reminds me of Bobby Codwell. But um, yeah, lots of good features um, and a, a story, a message. Um, when you listen to this album, yeah, strap yourself in your seat and, and get ready. It's, it's going to be uh, uh, 12 songs of the most... Uh, unique yet familiar sounding music you've ever listened to and it's gonna it's gonna bring you to a whole new space no other album or artist has brought you and can you talk a little bit about your upcoming single breathless yes um that one is with me uh detroit rapper cloudy um and also detroit rapper one below from binary star um breathless is a song that shows off our lyrical abilities our skills um really connects all three of us on a track for the first time together in a way the world hasn't seen before um over a nice take six sample um produced by me um my producer alias is PH, so you're gonna have PH production all over the album and all over this single. Uh, it's gonna be coming out real soon, within the next month. Um, there's gonna be a nice video for it. We shot it in Detroit. Uh, it's gonna be a, a real good summer song, man. The, it's gonna be a, a summer song for the hip hop heads, for real, for real. You know, um, something for for you to blast in the car, uh, blast with your friends. You know. Um, even even freestyle over if the instrumental comes out eventually, you know, because the instrumental is that good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's a real special joint that um, I'm very proud and happy and honored to have worked with uh, these rappers on and to be able to um, release it as the, the uh, foremost single for this project. And so you're a musician who's living and working in in Brockton, Massachusetts. Can yes. you talk about the history of of your performance area whether it be Massachusetts in general or or Boston? Yeah, um I've performed in a couple of different places, you know. I've performed at um Alaganza, Harvard, a very special fashion show. They have um, 5,000 plus um, guests and, and models there uh, performed at Quincy uh, College earlier this year, Northeastern University, um, the Sonia at, at the Middle East, um, Phoenix, Phoenix Landing. Um, I, I opened for um, Pete Rock and DJ premiere before and that was very special um, so yeah you know I've, I've, I've been a, a, in a few of the different spots and venues around Boston Church when Church Boston was running um, that was that was very dope I, I performed for uh, terminology and Rex um, two, two also big influences on my um, musicality and whatnot um, I'm always going to open mics you know no matter how how much money I do make from music or uh, how many opportunities I do get, I'll always find the the significance of open mics to be special and make it an, an important and critical thing to always, you know, go to one every now and then. Um, I did a, a performance for Indo Soul earlier this year and it was my boy uh, Vision, Vision the Great, I think he goes by. Um, he, was, he was doing his first um like show you know for his album that he's coming out with and you know he's part of the newer generation of rappers coming up and so i really um enjoyed 
seeing him and his performance and performing with them. Um, I performed at the Soul Power Sessions, which is run by Soul Flower um, and Kavaya. Um, and that one happens once a month in Roxbury in Boston. Uh, it's like a jam session type thing. They'll have a band. They'll have um, singers, rappers. Um, and it's like a jam session style um, event where, you know, if you just you just feel like grabbing the mic, you grab the mic. If you want to grab an instrument, grab an instrument, and you can just join in. Um, and it's so the atmosphere is so relaxing, welcoming, and highly professional that. Yeah, man, it, magic happens in that room every single time um, an event occurs. So, you know, if you do, if you do want to want to see um, another, you know, um, if you want to see me perform live anytime soon at upcoming events, you know, um, I'm supposed to be going to the Bridgeside Cypher later on this month. Uh, I'm sure that's June 21st. Um, next month is going to be the next Soul Power Sessions. I'm guessing between early July, um, yeah, and you know, there's just more stuff coming up as as the opportunities come my way. I, I select them down. So, um, if you ever want to see when the new updates for my performances are coming, you can check out my website, borderlinemusic.me, and we post them all up there: Instagram, Facebook, and uh, social media. But yeah, that, that's a, a brief history of my performances and uh, where I'm going performance-wise. What are the joys and challenges of songwriting? Man, hmm. So the process in general, I very much thoroughly enjoy. So even before my pen touches the paper, I enjoy talking with people, uh, drinking with people, smoking with people, um, chatting with people, having deep conversations about life, culture, uh, the future, philosophy, um, spirit. You know, these, these conversations very much create the infrastructure for what's what's going to be the next song. Um, so I enjoy that the most. And then when when it comes to actually writing, um, you know, I, I enjoy the rhyming, the, the, like, I'm a, you know, I grew up like a, like an English nerd too, right? I never was good at math, but I always loved English class, right? Um. Because the language, right, itself, I was always fascinated by words, definitions, prefixes, suffixes, assonance, consonants. Um, you know, I know a lot of the nitty gritty science behind what makes words sound good, what makes them pop, you know, what makes people, you know, fuck with what you say versus making you sound like a dodo or something like that, you know. Um, and knowing what all that means, right, without like. <laughs> being extra like ah uh, ebonics and blah 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 you know um so get, getting into all that and, and learning to really love that and appreciate that makes makes rhyming that much more uh drawing to me whether it's freestyling and like having that improvisational writing exercise like i'm writing but i'm not even putting a pen to paper i'm just speaking and this is like a, a writing session or like actually literally taking a pen to paper and writing stuff down um both of those super enjoyable for me, man. It's creation. It's 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 the natural process, you know. And can you talk about the experience of writing and releasing extremely personal music? Yeah. Rappers, uh, musicians in general. Uh, you know, I need to stop, stop using just the term rapper. It's so limiting. You know, musicians in general. Uh manifest um, new things in reality with their music. Now, that's with sound, vibration, frequency, but it's also with words, which is sound, vibration, and frequency too, right? So if I'm making a song that's like, death, 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 niggas kill me, death, 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 whatever. <laughs> I'm bringing death, 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 and niggas who want to kill me closer to my life every single time I say those things. Now, when I write, uh, I'ma make a million, don't fuck with chameleons, you know how I do it, I'ma stack up to the ceiling, you know? 
I just thought of that off the tip. But if I if I'm gonna say a rhyme like that, I'm more likely to make money, right? More likely not to mess with somebody who changes shape and color on me, the chameleons and whatnot. I'm more likely to, to make money that's gonna stack to the ceiling, you know, in my crib, right? So it's like writing being being mindful with your words and um as the book the foreign remus talks about being impeccable with your words and, and and knowing how to draw weight to your words is is crucial into manifesting the right things in your reality everything that i'm doing right now i predicted when i was you know uh, a kid and uh when i was in 2011 2012 2013 2014 you know um, without even realizing I thought I was just writing bars, but because the, the the words that I wrote were so positive, it manifested a very positive living for me in tw- in 2019, where I am now. And now that I see the positive the positive power in that, I make sure everything that I write within my songwriting process, um, I truly want to see manifest. I truly want to see it happen. If, if I don't want it to happen, then I shouldn't write it and I don't want to write it. And I suggest other musicians and writers do the same. Um, if you don't want it to manifest, there's no reason to write it because you'll make it come true by writing it down. How important is a strong online presence to your music career? In 2019, that's very important. <laughs> it was once upon a time, you know, people be like, what's the internet? But yeah, nowadays, yeah, you 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 need a strong online presence. Um, people exist on on many layers and platforms, so you know you you have to be present in all these all these realms of music. You have to be at shows performing. You have to um, go to your occasional cipher or open mic. You have to be online and on SoundCloud or in a chat on Instagram Live or uh, on Facebook. You know, these are all different realms of of music and your brand and things like that, but they're all equally important, you know, and help support each other, you know. There are people who do exist in only one realm, you know, people who don't exist on the internet, but you can go to their shows. Or people who exist only on the internet and you can't go to their shows. And, you know, some of them do just fine, but they they could always do better by interacting with the other realms and making sure that they keep up with those. So I see the, the internet as a very important aspect of music. You know, um, the, the internet community has supported music um, and the freedom of music more than anything. Um, and people don't don't give it credit for that, right? And the, right. So I, I know I probably give the long answers for everything, <laughs> right? If you look at the internet in the early two thousands, right? You had Napster, Kazaa, um, you know, all these pirating websites, and they were sending people to jail and suing them for millions of dollars for downloading music for free. Something that we all do now, right? And I remember when I, when I witnessed that, I already knew that it was going to be a common thing. I was like, yeah, this is the future. There is no reason for us to be spending, um, you know, $13, $14 for a physical CD if you can just download it online for free, right? And I say this as an artist who wants people to buy his music, but I also understand the importance of distribution and the importance of distributing to people who possibly couldn't afford you, you know? Um, the internet fought for those people. The internet made sure, hey, if you can't afford a billion albums every single time they're released, you can still listen to music. And then the music industry had to work around that. They couldn't They couldn't stop it. And that's why we have streaming today. So now more people can listen to music, more people can be exposed to music, and they don't have to shell out as much money, and they don't have to be considered criminals or put into jail because of it. Now, that key thing in and of itself is a reason to think the internet forever in my opinion what are your music career goals um whew, music career goals vertical ownership like i was saying earlier vertical business ownership i want to own every part of my business um i want to be able to put my people on family friends loved ones um i want to be able to uh, gain certain accolades, but if I don't gain them, I don't gain them, you know, like, you know, 
who, who wouldn't want an EGOT? Like, you know what I'm saying? The Emmy, Grammy, Oscar. The, like, you know, I wouldn't mind that. But then, you know, it doesn't come, it doesn't come. I'm not I'm not validating myself based off of that. Um, my goal, my goals are basically to, you know, gain, gain enough wealth to complete my life purpose um, and to help people discover their own life purpose in the process, you know? Now, what's one piece of advice that you could give to an aspiring musician or a musician who's just starting out in their music career? Discover who you are, you know, and, you know, it may be a very cliche trope, but you always think you know who you are until you find out more about yourself. And then you're like, damn, I really never knew who I was the entire time. Um, so being, being sure of who you are and, and unapologetically being yourself, um, making sure the identity that you portray in hip hop um, and you portray in your music is as aligned with your soul and your true purpose as possible. Because even if you do create a different identity, people have different aliases, and I fully support that, there will be a point in time where the what, what benefits your, your artist, or what benefits your, your, your alias, conflicts with what benefits you as a person and as a human being, you know? And you want to make sure what benefits you as a human being also benefits you as an artist. What benefits you as an artist also benefits you as a human being. These two identities have to work together in order for both identities to grow. If you feed one identity over the other, one is going to get hurt and it will eventually die. And, you know, when people choose themselves over their artist, they eventually quit music, they start a family, they do a 9-to-5 job, and they never go back to it. You know, the artist dies in them. Um, there's other people who decide to put it all into the artist and, you know, they make it to the billboards, they're a pop star and whatnot, but their heart is broken. They're not, they're not who they want to be anymore because they let themselves die and let the artist live. So my advice to people is to make sure they both live, the artist and the, and the human can work together. Um, and when you discover who you are as a person and who you are as an artist and how to allow them to work together, nobody will be able to stop you. Period. Can you share your social media links? Yes. Um, hold on one second. BorderlineMusic.me is my website. Um, PH Borderline on Facebook. PH Borderline on Instagram as well. Borderline PH on Twitter. And my SoundCloud is borderline ph as well um you can find all my social media links on my website borderlinemusic.me so if you forget any of these always default to borderlinemusic.me you'll find all my videos all my music all my albums and all all links to the other platforms as well is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge for offering financial or emotional support to you in your music career Financial or emotional? Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, my number one is, is going to always be, you know, my wife, my beautiful, my beautiful, beautiful wife of nine years. Uh, she's sassy, you know, she's she's always held, held me down, always supported me, always giving me the emotional support, the financial backing. Um, and yeah, she's she's the she's the fuel that keeps my engine running, um, and my inspiration in every single way. You know, beyond that, I'd say my family, my friends, my people, my history, my country, Haiti. Um, all these things motivate me on a day to day basis. I keep myself surrounded by my ancestors and surrounded by um, positive spirits and individuals that can move me forward. And I thank them. I thank them. Uh, to the ends of the earth for that. Is there anything else you'd like to promote or share? Um, yeah, I got a, I got a couple more albums along the way. So, you know, there's the single Breathless coming soon, um, Ways of the World, the album. But I also have an EP called The Hyrofan. I'm working with my um, music student, 
uh, see through. Uh, he's going to be uh, put, doing production on that, and that one's going to be a, a super gem. So believe me, it, uh, me, me saying it, the the tone that I'm speaking of it doesn't do its surface for how good this this EP is going to be. Um, I'm also working on a project called Borderline Hazel with um, Fair Hazel um, from the from the UK. It's going to be a nice um, Boston US uh, meets UK England type type stuff. You know, um, it's going to be real good, a real hip hop rock um, collab, and also PH Cloud. Um, I'm going to be more in my producer bag, producing and also rapping on a couple tracks with Cloudy uh, Uchiha from Detroit, and we're going to be making uh, yeah, a really, really strong hip-hop uh, album for, for the end of the year. So you can definitely look forward to all those projects. It's going to be one right after the other. Make sure they're on all streaming platforms, so then you can see me on Spotify, um, Apple Music, and etc. very soon. All right. I would like to give a very big thank you to my guests for joining me today here on the Creative Collective. As always, you so write much. your comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. And for all of your promotion, marketing, as well as music career consulting needs, email ennisproductions at gmail.com. <laughs>